Joanne, thank you for inviting me into your kitchen today. This, anytime. Anytime. This is Aunt Janet's kitchen, and today I'm on the road visiting my sister Joanne, and she's going to show us step by step how to make kibbe. Kibbe is the Middle Eastern version of meatloaf, and as I've said in other videos, our family is Lebanese, so we take the Lebanese slant on that. The recipe that Joanne uses actually is uh, my mother's recipe. Our sister Geraldine sat and watched mom mix the kibbe because mom really couldn't produce a recipe since she made it automatically on her own. So Geraldine wrote everything down and Joanne is going to be kind enough today to show me how she produces the Lebanese kibbe. Okay, any tips up front Joanne for making this delicious meat? Well, what I do is I get the um, meat packaged separately. So some of the Lebanese used the lamb, but we've used the beef, and so did Aunt Martha, because mm -hmm. it was readily available. So we went to Sendix today, which is a really good grocery store in Wisconsin, and I get one pound of the ground round in one package, and then I get the second um, package in the two pounds, so that I don't have to divide it up. You can do that, kind of measure it out by eye. But um, you may as well let the butcher do it, right? But it's more, yeah, that, right. that way it makes it a little simpler and quicker. And then, this is the, there's As Joanne's described the tip of getting two pounds and one pound separately packaged, I just want to point out the importance of getting good quality ground meat from the butcher rather than buying it simply off the, um, out of the refrigerator already packaged. You want the good quality ground round. So at this point I'm going to have Joanne show you the rest of the ingredients prior to us beginning the process of making this delicious kibbe. Okay, well the one ingredient that um, this big part of the mixture is the wheat. And we have to get the cracked wheat. Um, and this, you can kind of look at it and just see the granules. You don't want to get it too fine, otherwise it's kind of like cereal, like cream of wheat. Um, this is actually, if you feel it, it's it's hard, but it's, it's cracked. So it puffs up and we will soak that. And I don't get um, anything larger than that because it takes so long and sometimes it gets a little dry in, in the baking process. Okay, Joanne, I do have a question. Sure. Um, this indicates it's medium burglar. How do you pronounce that word? Bulgar. Bulgar. It's medium bulgar wheat. So if you're going to a Middle Eastern store. And that's where I got it. And that's where you got it. That's what you're looking for. And um, there can be finer than this. You know, when you go into, I tried to buy it in the supermarket, mm -hmm. and when you go into a, just a regular supermarket, it's not really the bulgur wheat. It's it's almost like too fine, almost like cereal fine or something you put okay. on top of yogurt. So that's the distinction I want to make. It needs to be cracked, um, and some of the health food stores will have this. But right. I, I did get this at a Middle Eastern, right. um, and the Greeks use it too. So. Right. I had, purchased, I had purchased some at a health food store locally, and mom was dissatisfied with it because it was not fine enough. It was, mm -hmm. it was too large, so just that point. And we'll show, we'll run this through our fingers so you can get a sense of the size of it. Okay, great. Next ingredient. And this I also got at the same store. It's the pine nuts. Now this, interestingly enough, says Habash Chinese Pine Nuts. But, um, you can see that every, these are a little more common. You can get these in a, in a good grocery store. In the produce department, sometimes they package it separately. Um, and that's for the filling in the kibbe. And then the other um, items, um, we have one, onion, one cup of the dried cracked wheat. So I'm just going to use this because I can soak it in here. It's okay. Let me know. And I know it's a dry measure, but we, we're using a wet measure. Okay. How we do? Pretty good. Shake it down, get it level. Yeah, a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, and okay, then if fair. we can get a close up of the size of the wheat, can you see that in my hand? Okay, mm. it is wheat cracked wheat here. Um, it's pretty chunky. All right, just take a look at what it looks like, so that um, that's the quality that you want for your kibbe. Mm -hmm. And then the next step is I. Um, Soak it so that it gets soft. And if you put too much water in, mm -hmm. then you have to, when you pull the weed out, you wring it out and put it in the meat mixture. Okay. But I like to fill it up a little bit over so that it swells up and absorbs it, and I don't have to squish that much water out okay. of it. Okay, do you stir it a little bit um, to mix the water in? I usually the don't. No, you just. 
I just let it sit and mm -hmm. then I go about doing everything else and then I check it and it swells up and if I need more water, if it's not soft enough, I just add more water. Okay, so, so it's all this, about the texture. Would this be about an hour soak time? About that. About that. All right, so we'll come back when we're ready to do the next step. Great. Okay, now we're um, checking the cracked wheat and as you can see all the water is absorbed so I really don't have to uh, squeeze any water out of it and then I actually just test it. Oh, you taste test it? Mm -hmm. Actually, it and seems okay. All right. It's still pretty chewy. Right? It's a little chewy? It's a little chewy, but it's not hard. No, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Let me try that yeah. again. Should I get a feel for it? It really is getting a feel for it. It is. Okay, here's the how the wheat looks. You can see how it's kind of puffed up. Usually, I don't hit it right on like this. Um, and then I have to add more water. So when you taste it, you said, what does it taste like? It's chewy, but there's no hardness to it. If there's hardness to it, then you just add a little bit more water, it'll be absorbed, and if it's too much, then you wring it out. So that's kind of... But you nailed it today, huh? I nailed it today. <laughs> I think it's the wider area, and mm -hmm. it's actually one cup of the dry um, bulgur, but you can see how it fills up to about two cups. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. And it was so, probably about two cups of water. Well, we used this, remember? Right. And is that oh, I just added more. Yeah. So yeah. it was probably, no, it was probably about a cup of water. About a cup of water? Yeah, because okay. we refilled really this. I was going to add more, but I didn't okay. need to. All right. Well, so that's good to know. All right. Next stage in the process. Now we're, we're going to make the filling. So the one onion I have chopped, and I'm going to take the pine nuts, the pepper, and the salt, Janet. Okay, I'll grab it. You need all of them? And all of them. My okay. absolutely favorite part of the kibbe was the filling. I know. I used to pick up that myself. So, yep, we all did. And now I generously coat the pan. So I love okay. the olive oil. Because right. it kind of seeps through with the ground round it's, and the, the wheat. Pick it up and then just coat it. So you can see I have quite a bit. Yeah, I know. I remember picking at the filling, too. <laughs> Stop it. There won't be any for the kibbe. <laughs> right, right. We'll be in the pan cooling and we will be sneaking by and getting some... So just take that up, and this I have chopped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fairly coarse. Yeah, um... What? I'd like to get it a little bit. just add it, her coarsely chopped onion, into the olive oil, and it's sizzling away, that aroma of cooking onion, one of my favorite scents. Okay, and this is one of Mom's recipes. Remember, Jerl and watched and wrote right. the recipe. Two handfuls. Of Two them. handfuls. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Gosh. Well, it looks like, hang on a minute, it looks like your handful is about a quarter cup. Okay. Well, let's use my hand. It's larger. I like the pine nuts. <laughs> I want more. Yeah. And we, when we spread them out on the layer of the kibbe, you'll see. Mm -hmm. So as this is cooking, I like to get this started first. Okay, before you would add the meat, right? Mm -hmm. And this you're not seasoning yet? Not yet. I do it when I have the meat in there. And then that's just salt and pepper. I wish this was a little. Okay, go. All right, at this point, you can see the onions are sizzling away in this olive oil. The pine nuts are just starting to get a little bit of color. This is a fairly hot pan going here. It's set on high heat, gas um, gas range. Joanne's ready to add some of that uh, ground ground. Oh, you're going to turn it down? And I'm going to turn it down. Okay. I'm going to start at adding. This point. Right. Because we want chunks of meat in there. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to use, the, after I get this in, then I'll, you, um, Janet, you can use the spoon and start browning up the meat. Okay. It. Okay. So. Boy, that meat is nice quality. Oh, it's a nice, that's... Ground round, so you're really dealing with, you know, not adding the meat fat into this. Yeah, it's more the olive oil. It's, yeah, which makes it healthier. I mean, the Mediterranean diet is a, is a healthy diet. John's rolling his eyes again. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we love it. So, almost finished here. Oh, and also, now Elise told me, this is interesting, I didn't have the pine nuts the one day, and you can substitute almonds if you can't get that, the oh, slivered no. almonds. And oh, I made it there. slivered almonds, and how yeah. was it? It was good. But it wasn't pine nuts. It wasn't pine nuts. Wasn't pine pine nuts. nuts are my favorite. Yeah, because I think so. pine nuts would absorb more of the flavor 
have a different taste, but yeah. it works with the... Um, it works. Yeah, That's interesting. Like that. But, um, yeah, if I'm going to go to the trouble of making kibbe, I'm getting pine nuts in it, Joanne. Yeah, I hear you. I just thought I didn't have to. Right, so. right. Yeah, and that's true about cooking. It can be flexible, you know? Um, you can experiment and... Robert, right, you're ready to season, huh? Uh -huh. Now here's the next part. So we're okay. going to go with salt. Right. So that's probably... What would you say? Maybe a teaspoon. Yeah. And then... Sprinkle with pepper. pepper. So you don't use the fresh pepper. You just like Actually, the pepper out of the can. Yeah, I have that. And you're peppering quite a bit there. Mm -hmm. A couple good shakes. Mm -hmm. Should I keep stirring yeah. it or let it sit and cook a little? Uh, I keep stirring it to brown it. Okay. Depends. you got to feel it. Mm -hmm. you got to see it. got to see it. Yeah, very visual. Okay, so you're on medium-high heat. And um, we're cooking along here. Yeah. And I could turn it down if we want to start mixing things. Oh, and just let it go slowly? Rena to Raina, to I think Raina could handle it. She knows okay. Yes, I will. Good okay. job, girl. All right, you're going to take it. I usually take a little nudge at it. And if it gets too brown, let mom know, and then we'll turn it up. Just turn it on. Well, Raina watches the browning of the meat, the onions, and the pine needles, the pine nuts. We'll go over and prep the rest of the kibbe. So thanks, Raina. You're okay, welcome. You can see I have the two pounds of the ground round here. Now we start getting the mixture together. And we just add the, the wheat. The onion. Okay, now a little bit to note about this onion. This is the one and a half onions, the or the one large, one small onion. And Joanne took it through the food processor, so it's very fine and juicy. We were tearing away here, but for the meat part here, we use the finer grind, and for the filling, we use the coarser onion. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to. I'll knead it and mix it a little bit and then I add the seasonings okay. and then we knead it again Okay. So, so that not all the seasonings are in the um, the onions or in one part of the the mixture Okay. so you're going to do cumin and mint right? yeah and I don't have to get it all the way all right, well. so now let's do you want to add it Janet? well tell me when you're ready yeah because we don't have to get it all the way oh. We need the allspice. Yeah, I have the allspice right here. So, All right, so what do you want in first? Um, the salt usually I put in first. Okay, I'll so, do that because you have the meat on your hands. Yeah, okay. and then I sprinkle it and salt it pretty well. Okay. Because you're salting, okay, and over here. Okay, that's good, Janet. Okay. Um, and you're not just salting the meat, you're salting the wheat. True, yes. Yeah. So yeah. that's and something that's a that's very bland. Yeah. Food, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And this will all puff up because mm -hmm. we're going to add some olive oil on top. Okay, the next thing you can do, the pepper, sprinkle the pepper over it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I want to <laughs> use the sprinkle side, not the pouring side. Just a side. little bit. Over Just it. a little bit. Okay, that's good. Okay. Okay, now the allspice, this is following mom. Mm hmm. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> that's, <laughs> uh oh, pretty much. Okay. Okay, well, let me know. All right. A little bit more. Yeah. A little bit more. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, now I just, And then I'll show the picture so you can. Right, hopefully this shows up. We're judging it by how the allspice darkened the surface of the food. And I would say, I'm estimating it wasn't pretty much, I think maybe half a teaspoon. Oh, really? Yeah, no, I don't We think... may not have enough because what we'll do is we'll taste the meat mixture. Raw. Okay, I'll let you do that. <laughs> I don't like to eat raw meat. All right, okay. as you can see with the allspice, there's a fine powdery cover to the meat surface and kind of the coverage of the allspice gives you an idea of how much to use. I would say it is probably half a teaspoon. It might have been a full teaspoon. Yeah, you could add a little add, more. Add a little more? Okay. Okay, yeah, that's, that's good. Dark pretty yeah. good. There you go. Okay. We have the salt, the pepper, the allspice, and now, Janet, we're going to do two handfuls of the mint. So two one, handfuls of one, the mint. One at a time. All right, is that about a handful? A little bit more. A little bit more. So that is, if you were measuring it, that's a tablespoon, don't you think? Even more you want? And a little bit more. I kind of feel it on my hand. Yeah, that's good. That's a solid tablespoon. Yeah, okay. And then... 
crush it so you get it as much of as a powder as okay. possible and blend it in here. So I'm using the heel of one hand into the palm of the hand holding the mint. Over the dish. And over the dish, yeah, because I'm getting a powdery uh, result here. How's it look, Joanne? Looks good. All You're right, you can see up. how fine that is. It's really down to a powder. So you don't want to fill this kibbe with full leaves. You want it a powder. Yeah. Now, um, Joanne, you did say once you encountered mint leaves with stems on them. Well, when I went to the Middle Eastern store, I, I bought like a bag of it, and it was dry, but the stems run. So that was pretty tedious pulling off the stems. Oh, yeah. And if you dry out your own mint, you have to pull the leaves off and. Once they're dry, and you want to remove the stems. When you buy it from the supermarket, it's just mm -hmm. already done, and it's nice. Okay, Jenna, maybe Another? not so not maybe not so full of uh, handful. How's that? A little bit more. Okay, that's good. I'd say you're looking at two tablespoons. I would say so too. You know, if if you're doing this, so two tablespoons for two pounds of meat. Yeah. And I just tell you what, it is the distinctness of the mint that truly carries the flavor of our kitty recipe. That's what I love the most. Okay. How's it look, dear? Good. Fine enough? You're a good okay. crusher. I'm a good crusher. Alrighty. Okay, and now we're going to take the cumin. Oh, okay. That's already ground. I don't have to squeeze yeah. that. Huh? And you sprinkle that. Oh, I sprinkle. Alright, I was ready to dump. Uh, and is there a... Okay. Sprinkle. Yeah. Okay. All over. All over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I think that's good, Janet. All right. All right. So now we start the, the blending. So you just kind of blend it. This is where you have to get all the spices together, all the cracked the wheat, wheat. Yeah, the wheat's moving through. You're getting a mm -hmm. distribution there of the wheat. Now, when I talked to Elise, she says she has a food processor she does this in. Mm -hmm. um, I have not done that, so... Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that I have one big enough for all of this. Well, she said she does it in batches. Oh, okay. Right, and wasn't there a little bit of debate as to whether or not cumin was going to be used or not? So well, she doesn't use it in hers. She uses um, cinnamon. Yes, cinnamon. Allspice and cloves. Oh, and cloves. Yes. Wow. So a little bit of clove, mm -hmm. not much, because that's such a strong spice. And then, of course, she puts the onion in, too, mm -hmm. and salt. And the mint. Mm -hmm. And the mint. And the mint. And the mint, yeah. But this is mom's recipe, which... Well, and mom keeps adapting because mom is... Creative. Creative, and she likes to try new things, and mm -hmm. this is what... As we're comparing, I realize um, what? Louis, uh, Lisa's is different. And I think like Aunt Martha's. I don't know. Did, did we just ask whether we thought Aunt Martha was going to taste the, the yeah, seasonings? Well, that's, that's what, what I'm going to do. That's what you're going to do there? Mm -hmm. All right. Eating that raw kippy. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm not used to eat rock cooking. Well, a lot of our Lebanese relatives do. So, is it seasoned fine or you need anything more? I think more? I think I'm pretty good with it. I think you're pretty good. Okay, mm -hmm. now we're ready for good the Good with the shaking. Thank you, Just thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the mixtures okay. all combined. Um, what mom does, and I think it's a good thing, because otherwise you think you can spread out all the patties and it gets thin in one spot and you run out of the meat for the top. So, Janet, you can help with this. We yeah. make, um, we're going to divide it in, if I can get 10 balls, but four good size balls for each layer, so eight good size balls. I kind of just, I. Oh, all right, you're doing balls. I was already making patties. Yeah, I do the balls and then I do the patties in there. Okay. I kind of eyeball it. So, that so you, you know you're not running out, and then you can change the size of the balls if you need to. Right. Good thinking, good strategy. Yeah. You had. If you've been in a situation where you can't patch over the filling, you're frustrated. You'll, it's frustrating. Yeah, it is frustrating. Okay, so you're going for ten balls. Yeah. Ten balls. Okay. How are we doing here? We're doing pretty good. Holy oh, fuck! All right. We now have ten balls of the prepared kibbe meat. Some of them are a little larger than the others. So Joanne's going to show us how we get those in the pan. It's a uh, 9 by 13 glass pan, you can use a metal pan as well. Mm -hmm. And then I start in the four corners mm -hmm. and I try to fill the entire space. Okay. And I one. like to use the bigger, save the most mixture for the top because it's, oh, to okay. it's hard to spread that over the um, mixture. Okay, and you want to make sure you have that layered effect. Mm -hmm. okay. So 
So we're just kind of patching it in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how's that? Okay, and over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, pat it down very firm. Mm -hmm. Right, don't want it loose. It, so it looks like one sheet. Right. Not four patches, Not four or, patches or whatever. And um, what would you say how thick it was? Uh, oh, it's probably only about a quarter of an inch thick, wouldn't you say? Yeah, between that and a half. Right, and you want it even all the way across. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how good this smells already. No wonder uh, our, so many of our relatives like to eat the raw kitty. It smells delicious. Okay, so where it's a little thin, yeah, you're I'm adding just, more. I'm just adding a little bit, and okay. I think it will be pretty good. Then. then we take the filling. Okay. So, we want to show this. Mm -hmm. Layer, first layer. Okay. Raina's finished browning the filling, and we simply brought it over to the pan here that we're cooking the kibbe in, and as you can see, there's still some of the olive oil there, and Joanne does not drain that. We simply add the prepared filling into the pan with the first layer of kibbe. Is that right, Joanne? Mm -hmm. And you want me to get it all? You have all that good, delicious. Every part of that delicious filling onto the top of the. Spread out the mixture so that it covers the whole bottom layer. That does it. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to start with this. And Jenny, you know how it is. It's a little more challenging. No, so, I don't know how it is. That's oh, <laughs> I okay. need you to So you want to you want to flatten it out as much as you can in your hand. Okay. Because so it not... doesn't spread as easily on top of the cooked meat. So. Okay. Well, how thick is it? Let me see. Okay. I'm a little thinner. Right, and kind of weave it into the yeah. You can like patch that. it in. Mm -hmm. And so you really want it flattened where before. you want it to be. Right. Otherwise, it just starts combining, and you don't get that layer. Okay. So. All right. Good. And that's why I say more for the top. For the top. Okay. It's a little more challenging. Yeah. Well, you can see that. I think too it's interesting to see the color of the wheat changing the color of the meat and it gives you a sense of how much of the wheat there is in this mixture. Mm -hmm. say it's about 50% meat and 50% um, wheat. Okay. okay, so if you take a look at the color of the meat, you know it was a bright red fresh ground meat and now we have the wheat in it and it's, you know, the color has changed. And, um, it seems we're really looking at about a 50-50 ratio here, half meat, yeah, half wheat, you know. So that's the color that we end up with. Oh, here's a bare spot back there. Yeah. All right, I'm taking that last little meatball and uh, f filling it in, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's how it looks. It should look like one piece. And now we cut it before we cook it. Just from diagonals. And I always used to wonder before I started making the kibbe when we were young, didn't you like how Aunt Martha had it looking so nice it would come out such right. a neat pattern? Right. And I like to cut it a little thinner. Uh-huh. And I think she did too. Uh-huh. And the cuts really serve a purpose in the cooking because it'll allow the olive oil to seep through. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Then we'll go this way. So the pieces become little diamonds or um, mm -hmm. little rectangles. Oh, you do cut it a lot smaller. I think Aunt Martha did. Was well, that yeah, you're probably right, but I know Mom cuts hers larger, probably because everybody ate so much of it anyway. <laughs> Give yeah. them a bigger piece to start. Okay, well, I think that looks pretty good. And then. I do put the the finger hole in the there. The finger hole for the olive oil. All see. the way to the bottom, right? Yes. All the way to the bottom, put the pokey hole. Okay. And then we'll pour olive oil. Okay. We'll fill the hole and then 
You fill the hole. I do. Yeah. What, what's the point of the hole? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> so now we, well, I'll let you do that. Okay, you're showing me. So you're just covering it. Yeah, it'll seep in. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's it? That's you pretty much You need a little more it. over there? Or? Oh, oh yeah. you're tilting it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty good. Did mm -hmm. I get it on? Mm -hmm. A little dry over here. There's no way over there. Let me just see. Because we don't want too much once it starts cooking up. Okay. But if you get a good cut of meat, you won't. You won't what? Get um, a lot of, like, it'll, it'll absorb into the meat. Mm-hmm. And the so, wheat, and right? The, and the wheat, yes. Yeah. Probably more the wheat. This looks like it's ready to go into the oven. It, it is. And what temperature? Uh, I cover it with the aluminum foil. 300. Uh -huh. 300. That's a really slow oven. Yeah. It's a low heat. And how long is it going to be? An hour. An hour. An, An hour. hour at 300. Yeah. But you do cover it with aluminum foil. I cover it with aluminum foil. And then about 10 minutes before it's finished, pull it off and let it brown on the top. Let it brown on yeah. the top. Yeah. You don't want to do it too much. You don't, we don't want it to get um, dry. Right. Okay. I but just to brown it. aluminum foil. Yeah. I can't just to dry I it. about that. Just to dry it. <laughs> just to brown it. <laughs> so. You want it browning at the end. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, great. We'll get back to our step-by-step -step video here when the job is done and you get to see our finished product. And the timer went off a few minutes ago, so let's check the kitty. Okay. I think everybody's hungry. <laughs> and it's oh, ready. Wow. Whoopsie. Whoopsie is right. Yeah. Must be yeah. Okay. Okay, you got it? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at this. So that's the finished browned up. Mm -hmm. And once it cools, we can cut cut it out and it'll come out in chunks. Yeah, we'll just follow the cut lines that we yeah, already have. And then had. you can see the um, the filling inside. Great. Okay, we'll take a shot of that in a second. Ready to, Ready to serve it up. And yeah. as you can see, all the olive oil is absorbed. Oh, let me see. Yeah, can you take a look? Okay, yeah, take, oh, that's hot. But take a look. There's no olive oil. Remember, it was pulled on top. It's all absorbed. That's a clue you're done, Enjoy right? It. This looks absolutely delicious. Well, I want you to try it. Oh, I'm ready and waiting. Okay, let me just, you can see, it's, I don't even have to cut it, it just... Oh, and look, there's not a bit of the olive oil. No, and then you, as it browned up and everything, you can see how it's risen up a little. Let's get a little piece out. Okay. The, the first piece is the hardest to get out. That's always the case. That's always the case. Oh, excuse my papers. Mm. Of course, it's really, it's piping hot. It's piping hot, yeah. You know, I like Kibbe Stone Cold, too, right out of the refrigerator. I do, too. Either way, it's delicious. I do, too. So, I don't know if you can see, though, this is not the best piece. But as it, it, as it pulls out, should we get another piece out there? Right Maybe. We'll get one yeah. from inside a little more. Yeah. See how it. that looks. Okay. Because I... Yeah. All right. Oh, it's, there you go. You get to see how the layers are separating. The filling, mm -hmm. the filling is yes. between the layers. Yeah. Oh, that looks great, John. Yeah, I'll open this one up. Okay. So, yeah, the taste is, is the biggest thing. It's the biggest well, thing. Finishing awesome. things up with the kibbe, I fixed some of our yogurt. Wonderful. Yeah, it's not quite the Lebanese yogurt, but we take oh, the plain it. Chobani Greek yogurt, yeah. use uh, cumin, paprika and I crushed the mint on it the way mm -hmm. we did it for putting in the kibbe drizzled olive oil on it and then that makes a wonderful side to dip the kibbe in yes. complimentary flavors yeah Joanne this looks great thanks so much for having me in your kitchen and I know everybody that visits step-by-step -step cooking with Aunt Janet is going to enjoy this kibbe recipe oh I hope so Thank well, thanks you. Janet it's been fun it has been a blast <laughs> Well, how is it, Grandma? Does it meet? Does it meet your requirements? Well, you can't do better than that. <laughs> oh, Joanne, did you hear that? Mom has given her judgment of your kibbe. And? And? What did you say, John? What did uh, you ask? I asked if it met your requirements. And what did I say? She said it goes beyond her requirements.